Well, the ACLU, the American Federation of Teachers, and other enthusiastic defenders of legal abortion have denounced Betsy DeVos, the new Secretary of Education, as, ironically, harmful to the nation's children. One of the most common criticisms of DeVos is that she has no familiarity with public schools. And that did not improve today, as a mass of protesters prevented her from visiting a public school here in Washington and possibly assaulted her. Cops are looking into it now. Watch what happened. She's giving money to senators and buying your way to the position. You should be so proud of yourself. Go back. Shame! 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 Wow. What has made these protesters so mad that they'll attack DeVos on her third day? Joined now by Douglas Harris. He's an economics professor at Tulane University in New Orleans. Professor Harris, thanks a lot for coming Parker, on. Parker. What do you make of that? Parker, thanks for having me back. Well, I, I think the incident today was unfortunate and, and I, don't, I don't think really represents you know, most of the protests. Certainly there, there's been a lot of opposition to her, but I think most of it's been pretty peaceful and I think most of it will continue to be. But I do think it's worth thinking about what, where it's coming from, you know, why the opposition has been uh, so strong uh, and, and why the, the Senate Democrats went to such lengths to, to try to, to stop her. Uh, you know, my own take on it from the beginning has been that it is about her ideas and the, the idea that a free market in schooling is the best thing uh, for students in the long term. Right. Uh, I think you know, that, that's my take on it. I think the, the reasons why the opposition have been so strong, I think, are, are a lot broader than that. You know, I think if you, if you wanted to come up with a, a resume of things that you, you probably don't want to see in a Secretary of Education, that's kind of what her resume looks like. The conflicts of interest, the, the lack of experience in schools, the, the comments about public schooling as being a dead end. Uh, you know, not having the experience and then uh, having, having uh, educators who take their jobs very seriously. They're very passionate about their jobs. I think that's one thing you can, you can see from the last couple of weeks. And then to have somebody uh, with that resume come in and, and be deemed the, the education leader for the country uh, is, is tough on, on folks. Right. Well, they're too passionate about their jobs. Saving their jobs is their main concern in a lot of cases. I sent a child to public school here in D.C., and I can tell you that some of the teachers put as their, as their primary interest saving their jobs rather than educating the kids. But I guess, look, yeah, you've got to have a fair debate. You and I have had a fair debate, and an interesting one, and I agreed with some of the things you said about the ideas that Betsy DeVos has about reforming education. But to attack her personally and to say she doesn't care about kids, doesn't care about schools, when she spent like $20 million just to be nice, just not on her own kids, but on other people's kids, right. And, and actually, the school that she and her husband have funded in West Michigan has had great results. I mean, I think by any standard, it's, it's kind of worked. doesn't mean it's applicable to all schools. But it does mean people ought to give her the benefit of the doubt personally, shouldn't they? Well, I, I do think she cares. And I think the, the, the reform movement often kind of goes off in these different directions on both sides of people saying they don't care. So on the one side, saying that teachers are just out to keep their jobs. You know, the, the teachers, teachers care about their jobs, yes, but they also they care about kids. Uh, and I think at, at the other side, I think Betsy DeVos cares about kids. I think that uh, that she has their interest in mind. I think we just have very uh, different views about what's in their interest. And I think uh, I don't think she's looked carefully at the evidence and, and, and really looks looks at it that way to see whether things are, are working or not. She has a very strong idea of what she wants to do, and she's going to pursue that uh, seemingly uh, against the evidence. It just seems like in a normal world, people, including teachers, would look at the test results in Washington, D.C., which is where this happened today day and say, this is so outrageous. I mean, I've got the numbers here. You're familiar with them. 12% yeah. of D.C. public school students can pass the math standards. 12%. Why aren't they having protests against that? I mean, that really is hurting people way more than Betsy DeVos could even devise to hurt somebody. But there are no protests about that. Why? Well, I think they, they do oppose that, and, and they have different ideas on what they want to do. You know, so the alternative uh, approach here would be, and, and I'm not advocating this, but just trying to, to summarize the position, that we need more early childhood education, and, and we need uh, to, to pay teachers higher salaries and more support, uh, you know, better buildings. You know, some of the buildings in Detroit are, uh, are, are widely publicized to be falling apart. Do uh, people and, really and, think and, that after what we did in Kansas City, what we've done here in D.C.? I mean, have you seen some of the schools? We have here. My daughter went to one, and you know they're unbelievable. They're, I mean, they're way nicer than any private school here in their physical plant. 
and yet, you know, the results are spotty at best. I mean, do people really, with a straight face, argue it's a pure funding formula? The more money you put into it, the better result you get? I just don't think there are any data to show that. No, I, I, I don't think that that's what the data show either, but I think yeah, there certainly are places where money is an issue, uh, and, yeah. and a, a, lot, a lot of what's going on isn't just about the schools either, right? So we have to remember that a lot of the, the low performance that we're seeing, you know, a lot of that starts uh, and exists when students start the first day of kindergarten, exactly. and the schools are trying to catch up from that. that uh, so it's not, just about the, it's not just about the schools, and this is why I think people point to early childhood education as a, as a potential solution, so that they're not so far behind. Uh, yeah. So I, I do think that that one in particular is a, is a good idea. Do I think that money alone is going to solve this problem within the existing system? No, and that's why my, my argument hasn't been that we shouldn't do anything differently. It has, it's, it's that we shouldn't no, I know. go in, so far in the direction that she's arguing. Right. Professor, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you.